out of all of the abuse that I've been through, and I've been through a lot of abuse, nothing matches in pain and in difficulty and in shame the things that my mom did to me. Nothing. I'm Andrea, I'm 35 years old. I live in New York City with my partner. I'm Kristen, I am 28 years old. I'm married for, it's been about four and a half years. Um, my name is Marilyn Roberts and um, I'll be 49 tomorrow. Hi, my name is Kathy Rose and um, I live in Maryland and I'm 36 years old. My family um, seemed very normal, like middle class. Um, you know, we had money and we, I was always, you know, well-fed, well-dressed and my mom was into P PTA and um, very involved in my school and everything. Um, to the outside world, we looked really normal. That she wanted to externalize her pain in the same kind of way that some people engage in cutting because it takes emotional pain and it transfers it to a physical pain, except they do it on themselves. I feel like she was doing that, but using me. If I, if I dared to breathe a word to anybody or look different or look like something was wrong at home, people might ask questions. If people start asking questions, that my, my mother's gonna take it out on me. And, and I was afraid. And the part about it that hurts so much is that I, don't understand when you have the same anatomy how you could be hurtful in the same way knowing exactly how you would feel. I had to have two surgeries because of the physical damage that she did to me. Um, like scar tissue and my organs were all out of place because um, structural damage that was done. Since that my mother has completely engulfed me and, t and like basically swallowed me inside of her. That is the feeling that a lot of mother-daughter sexual abuse survivors have. And uh, for me, it's basically that she, I was, I originated in her, but it's like I never got out. I think about, you know, having kids one day and how my friends, their moms will fly out and help them take care of their new baby and help show them the ropes of motherhood. And I don't get to do that because I would not bring my mother near my children ever because I, I don't want them hurt. I don't want them hurt and I know that she is capable and would likely hurt them. And so she doesn't get to see my children, but then I'm left alone. We need to have a therapist who is open-minded and validates what we're saying and not tries and does not try to, um, I don't know what the word is, take up for or, or say, well, mothers do this or mothers do that. Mothers usually do this with children. So, you know, what is, why would that be different? Or, or, um, or just say, does that, you know, are you sure about that that really could happen? And it's so important to talk to other MDSA survivors because um, it validates my truth and my reality, like even hearing other stories that are different than mine, it still validates it because I can just see that in other families it was similar and that it wasn't just my mom or it wasn't just me that made her do that. You know, I thought for so long that I was the one that made her crazy. Kristen and I drove together and it was just great because we met each other in the airport and we hugged each other and um, there was just just this silence of just you know the unspoken the unspoken word of just being able to really understand we knew that we understood each other and um, it's just been great so far just because you know I don't feel so separated from the world and it just really helps me a lot you are not my mother anymore because mothers love their children and being a mother is a privilege and you've lost that privilege because of what you've done to me and that was one of the most powerful things that I've, that's ever happened to me